After some bad news in the recent past, how about a little bit of good news? I have a piece of good news. I have successfully converted one of my 30-year-old NICAD JVC camcorder battery packs to use lithium-ion cells. I have it electrically finished. It's not physically quite complete yet, but I'll show you what I've done here. So this is a 3-cell 18650 holder. I bought on eBay for like 99 cents. And what's neat about these holders is uh, they do not come with the cell bays uh, pre-connected. You can wire them any way you like. You can wire them in series as normal, or you can wire them all in parallel if you wanted like three cells in parallel, which is great. So I've wired this in series because of course the NICAD battery pack uh, was originally 9.6 volts nominal voltage. Um, three 18650 cells in series give a nominal voltage of, uh, let's see, 3.7 volts, so that's 9, 10.4, 11.1 volts, which is okay, that's not too high, camcorders will work just fine. As I showed in the update video, I uh, successfully dremeled one of these uh, NICAD packs open. I, cho I have six of these, and I chose the worst one which I originally measured to be 175 milliamp hours, but since then uh, it became completely non-functional. One or more of the cells have shorted out and it will not take any charge anymore. It self-discharges very quickly and the voltage won't go up more than 5 or 6 volts no matter how much current you pump into it. So I drilled it open, cut out the cells. These are what the cells look like. There's four of these cardboard tubes with two what look like sub C uh, nickel cadmium cells in each of these cardboard tubes. Eight of them in series in total. And uh, if we look at how I've got it wired here, so there's just the two terminals on the battery casing itself, negative and positive. So I've wired those appropriately to this holder. I don't have a lot of space here. I'll turn my video light on, that might help. And uh, you can see there I've just wired them all in series. Now I made a dumb mistake. I wired them in series such that I can place the cells all in the same direction, but that's dumb because as you can see those green wires there are quite long. That's not an ideal design because you're going to have a tiny bit of voltage drop and power loss over those wires. But I wasn't thinking when I did this, oh well, because I could have just done a short wire straight across those two terminals and then another short wire straight across those two terminals at the bottom and that would have been a more efficient design <laughs> but I wired it such that I can put all the cells in the same direction at least so you can see I got positive going there goes through the first cell in series to the second cell which then goes to the bottom here and then in series to the third cell and then at the bottom at the other end is the negative terminal and I've tested this on one of my JVC GRC7 camcorders and it works I think all I'm going to do to physically finish this is I have some double sided tape. I'm going to see if I can stick some double sided tape uh, between these two halves. Uh, actually it's not going to work that well because there's ridges and stuff so it's probably not going to work but I'll see what I can do. Oh I have JB weld. I could use JB weld if double sided tape doesn't work. But I'll see if I can use double sided tape to stick this battery holder onto this casing and affix it there so it's not loose hanging like this. Let me see if I can do that. Well, double sided tape half worked. It's sticking but not very well. Also a wire fell off while I was taping it so I had to re-solder that. So all in all this is a very crude and dangerous device but uh, it does work. Um, yeah, in retrospect I should have had a fuse holder in there because if a wire ever comes off and ever happens to uh, short out a cell, that could be big problems. Um, but, for now, it is just fine for a good uh, proof of concept. So, I had three cells right here. I recently, you'll remember in the update video, I'm like, darn, I forgot to bring 18650 cells. Well, uh, wouldn't you know it, uh, at school in a recycling box, electronics recycling box, uh, I found a laptop battery from 2011 and it was a six cell battery there's the other three cells and they all test at two amp hours absolutely pristine cells I'm super happy <laughs> it couldn't have come at a better time 
So, I'll uh, put the cells in and then we'll test this with a camcorder. Alright, there it is. So, uh, we just slip it on the camcorder. And there it is, the uh, tape counter popped right on, turn it on. Works just perfect. And there it's playing a tape. Oh, my uh, tape job came undone. So, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and... Oh, no, oh, the, uh, you see the two LEDs blinking there. That's the uh, error code for the tape going slack. Uh, off and back on. Did I let these, uh, oh, the tape's not slack. I'll rotate it anyway. This is the other camcorder, the worst one that has the <laughs> the redneck foam over the microphone. So this the mechanism's probably a bit sticky. Well, let's try again. Oh, it's doing. I can hear the mechanism switching between two speeds. What's going on with this thing? There's nothing on the display. Let me try again. Let me just rewind it. But as you can see, the battery pack's working just fine. Danger and all. And there's no low battery icon on the display. That's twice the capacity of the original NICAD battery, which is awesome. Oh, the mechanisms. Do you see that? Oh, it actually can't turn the tape. That's not, could it be the humidity in here? Oh, okay, the tape was slack. So that mechanism's sticky. Needs some work. Needs a workout, I mean. Well, it's over three hours later, and I fixed the playback problem. Uh, turns out, really, both of these camcorders have are having this problem, but this one more so. And uh, I think, I don't think I've fixed it, but I think I've done something to help it. And what I noticed the problem was, this idler pulley right here, I believe that's the proper name for it, an idler pulley. I turned it, it's, it's a little rubber wheel, free spinning. And its job is to connect the uh, transport motor. It, it, uh, it moves up and down like this. And that's so it, it can either connect with this bottom wheel for when you're rewinding or it moves up and connects with this top wheel for fast forwarding. And it's a rubber wheel and the wheels it connects to are rubber, so it's rubber on rubber to initiate that transport action. Well this, this pulley, when I try to rotate it freely, um, it was really, really stiff. And when I, uh, as you can see, I've obviously taken the uh, door cover off here. When I have a tape in it, um, I notice when the tape's playing, this little gear up here should be spinning because that's connected to the upper gear train here, which is connected via this idler pulley to the main transport motor. And I notice that when I'm playing a tape, uh, the this upper gear here wasn't moving and it turns out that what was happening is is because this idler pulley is stiff um, the transport motor which the transport motor is directly connected to this wheel which is concealed right here which in turn turns the idler pulley well the main 
drive wheel was spinning, but because the idler pulley was stiff, it wasn't spinning, so the upper gear train wasn't spinning. So what was happening was the uh, supply reel of the cassette was spinning, but the take-up reel wasn't. And the camcorder sensed this. This, this camcorder is really smart for its time in terms of detecting faults, uh, mechanical faults. The camcorder detects that and immediately stops itself and uh, turns the supply reel backwards to hopefully spool the tape back in. Um, unfortunately, off camera, while I was you know, determining this and testing it and everything, this did eat the tape a couple of times, so there's now a really bad wrinkly spot on the tape that's so bad that it actually causes the head drum to stall the uh, friction of it, which is kind of interesting. But, uh, so what I did was, I took some oil, and I oiled, I dripped some oil just, you know, where that, where the rubber wheel meets the plastic rim, and it's still a little bit stiff, but it seems to have helped quite a bit. And, uh, if I stick a tape in it now, this thing's, by the way, um, Regarding the battery pack, uh, I've had this thing turned on continuously, testing it for three hours, and it's still, the battery's still holding up, and I measured the voltage, the voltage is only dropped by like half a volt, so that's awesome. So let me eject it here, turn my light out, stick the cassette in, so I guess this is a two-in-one video now new battery pack and unexpected camcorder repair actually I better turn my light back on It'll be so you can see that gear turning so I oh I have backlight compensation on that's no good that's why the picture is all washed out so I'll press play Oops. there and it's spinning and it's playing just fine and uh, before I'd start playing and that gear was not spinning so if I do a review here yeah sometimes before I oiled it sometimes if I did a review it would cause the wheel to start spinning and then it would work but if I stopped it and then started playing again the wheel would be stuck I'll do a cue here it's obvious, obviously working just fine. Do another review. Do a pause. And a play. Pause and play. Yeah, that's working well. That's awesome. In fact, um, you may remember when I made the original video of these camcorders, I mentioned how uh, sometimes they would seemingly throw an error code for no reason and stop functioning, well I think this has been the problem all along is that stiff idler pulley. So let me just do a full stop. And I'll do a play again. Yeah, working just as it should. Pause, play, pause, play, Oh, that's working beautifully. Yeah, that's working great. Sweet. Uh, okay, I'm glad it was as simple of a problem as that. I find it odd that an idler pulley has gone stiff. That is not something I would expect to need oiled. I wasn't even sure there were any, like, parts that would benefit from being oiled. But, uh... It seemed to have worked, so... Sweet, so that's working. And this battery pack is working. I just need to physically attach the uh, cell holder to the rest of the case. I tried a ton of double-sided tape. All it did was make a really stupid mess. But uh, that's working. So there you go. There is a conversion of a 30 year old 9.6 volt NICAD battery pack to modern lithium ion cells, much lighter, 
twice the capacity. Uh, much easier and more practical to charge because lithium ion uses constant voltage charging whereas nickel based batteries require constant current which is a lot harder to do and uh, it'll probably last a lot longer, more charge cycles, uh, no memory effect. Oh it's awesome. And this battery will fit the JVC GRC7, it'll fit the GRC1, uh, it might fit the GRC2, I'm not sure if the C2 uses the same battery, and it'll probably fit a lot of other camcorders too. I have a camcorder I have yet to make a video of, it's a completely different manufacturer and it's from the mid 90's, and it's just different enough that you can't put this battery on normally but you can use a little bit of physical violence to force it on and it will fit and it does work so I'll be able to use this battery on that too so I'll do the uh, final attachment of this battery of this cell holder to the case with uh, JB Weld and uh, then it'll be ready to go so there you go good stuff uh, glad I killed two birds with one stone in this video and there's the final product all epoxied together with JB Weld. I used lots of JB Weld, almost the entire remainder of my tube. So it's uh, it's it's in there sturdy. It ain't going anywhere. Hope uh, none of the wires ever break from their solder, cause uh, <laughs> there ain't gonna be no getting them reconnected. I think. I think uh, any attempt to remove this cell holder now would just completely destroy both halves so hopefully that never happens but uh there you go anyhow it works very well it's not even terribly ugly looking and uh it's very convenient and versatile because the cells are removable so i would say this is a very good idea for my uh, vintage camcorders and also just one more kind of amusing tidbit of information uh jb weld undergoes a chemical reaction with plastic um, when you use normal amounts of JB weld like putting two bits of plastic together you don't notice it but when I used as much as I did here and I didn't use just what you see on the sides here I put most of it on the bottom there just in between the uh, shell and the cell holder you can't see it but I used a ton of JB weld there and JB weld chemically reacts with plastic and it's an exothermic reaction meaning that it releases heat so after I had stuck these two pieces together they started getting really really hot because there was so much JB weld so so much uh, chemical reaction happening but uh, it's kinda just just a little tidbit of information there it's kind of uh, kind of amusing but there you go anyhow